Central bank digital currencies, or also called CBDCs, are going to disrupt the financial industry. And in this video, we're going to explain what they are, their potential impact, and the challenges they pose within the economy. So without further ado, let's go into it. Welcome back to my channel, where we talk all about banking, finance, economy, and investments. And today we're going to explore uh, CBDCs. CBDCs have been a hot topic lately in the news. Uh, we've read that many central banks are starting to issue their own CBDCs. Other central banks are uh, starting some projects on, 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 on pre-studies on how to issue and what would be the structure uh, to issue these CBDCs without causing major issues to the society. And it's a really interesting topic that today we're going to explore. But first thing first, what is a central bank digital currency? In simple terms, CBDCs are a digital currency issued by a central bank. Unlike cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, they are centralized and controlled by the central bank. Not like cryptocurrencies that are completely distributed and there's no central entity who controls it. But it's important to understand the difference between a CBDC and the digital money that we already use uh, by paying with our cards in our digital banking platforms that we can see our, our balance, our money balance um, in the app. So you have to differentiate between private money and public money, okay? Public money would be uh, banknotes and coins, okay? And they are public money because they are issued and controlled by a central bank, okay? For example, in the Eurozone, uh, public money would be a euro coin or a 10 euro bill and private money would be all the money issued by private banks. For example, VMP Paribas, uh, UBS, uh, Citibank. In simple terms, the money that private banks create when you ask for a loan, um, the money that appears on your balance, that would be private money too. So CBDCs would be a digitalized way of public money. For example, imagine that instead of having a euro coin or a 10 euro bill, you would have 10 euro CBDC or two euros uh, coin, but in a digitalized way. Private money is like fictitious money, okay? But it's not fictitious because there is trust, okay? When we go, when we see in our bank account that we have 1,000 euros, for example, we know that we could go to an ATM and exchange this private money that we have in our bank account to 1,000 euros in coins or in bills. That's why we need public money and why private money stands for. Because there is this trust that with this private money, we could always get public money. I know it can seem a little bit strange, but at the end, you just have to know that CBDCs would be a digitalized version of a 10 euro banknote or a two euro coin. You may be wondering why central banks want to issue CBDCs. In the last years, you probably realized that we are using less and less coins and cash. Instead, we're paying with our credit cards or with our phone. And it means that public money is not being used at the end. Uh, we're just using private money or fictitious money. So CBDCs are very important because when the point arrives that we don't use any more cash or coins, we still be able to use public money, okay? Not fictitious money. Also, CBDCs can be built in a way that they enable streamlined transactions and make process way more efficient and so reduce cost. So for all this is why central banks are starting to consider or are already implementing CBDCs. Also, with CBDCs, central banks can have way more visibility and transparency into all transactions that are occurring in the world. And so more control on money supply and more visibility onto potential illicit transactions that could lead to uh, money laundering. You may be thinking, what's the point then of using private money that I can pay with my credit card or with my Apple Pay or whatever, if instead I can use central bank digital currencies? If I can use public money in a digitalized way, I would trust way more public money than private money that at the end, I don't know what can happen to a bank, but at least I know that a central bank has the back of the government or a big entity behind. If everyone would do this, that would be the normal thing because obviously you would trust way more a central bank than a private bank. Private banks would lose a lot of market share because customers would stop using their money. 
So that's a big challenge that central banks have already realized. And obviously they don't want to eliminate private banks. In order to be able to coexist CBDCs and private money issued by private banks, they have already considered some measures that we're going to explain. Another big issue is privacy. If you pay everywhere with central bank digital currencies, it means automatically means that central banks would know what you are doing everywhere and at any time. So central banks need to find this balance between privacy and transparency. Additionally, interoperability between central banks would be huge. Now, when you have to do a transaction between Europe and Asia, you do it through private banks. And these private banks, there are a lot of intermediaries between, in, in this transaction. If central banks could achieve interoperability between them, it means that you could pay from Europe, China, for example, uh, super fast and reducing a lot transaction fees. You could compare it to cryptocurrencies. Nowadays, you can pay, for example, with Bitcoin from Europe to Asia in 10 minutes. Or if you use other cryptocurrencies, uh, you could do it even faster and with infamous transaction fees. So this inter interoperability between central banks would be key to unlock this efficiency in the banking industry. So where do we stand in terms of implementation of CBDCs? Many countries have advanced a lot into the implementation of their CBDCs uh, and countries, for example, like China, Bahamas or Sweden uh, are the ones who are leading the race of uh, CBDCs. In Europe, we are still far away from uh, achieving or implementing a digital euro, even though the European Central Bank has already started a pilot uh, in order to understand uh, what would mean for the European economy implementing a digital euro and which technologies or, or how to structure it um, in order to cause uh, the less impact and improve a lot the European economy. Regarding the digital euro, the European Council and the Central Bank um, have already highlighted a few key topics. Digital euro would have to be accessible and inclusive. This means that everyone should be able to have access to digital euro. Another highlighted topic is security and privacy. So digital euro would have to find this balance between privacy, uh, okay, so that European people is able to pay with CBDCs without losing privacy and security. Okay, so that CBDCs or central banks have uh, more transparency into illicit transactions. And a third highlighted topic is that digital euro should complement cash, okay? They have said it's super clear that they don't want to get rid out of cash. They want to complement it, okay? And also uh, complement it with private money issued by private banks. So at some point when CBDCs become a reality, or in this case, the digital euro becomes a reality, it would have to live together. Central bank digital currency, or in this case, digital euro, cash, and uh, private money issued by private banks. In order to achieve this complementation between these three types of euros that we would have in the European Union, um, some measures have uh, sound that, for example, you could maximum or each individual could maximum hold 3,000 CBDCs or digital euros. This seems not a very good measure because then people would just pass out of CBDCs, but um, they have to do it because if not, uh, people would just uh, stop using private money and use only CBDCs or digital euro, as obviously you trust way more the European Central Bank than any other private bank in Europe. Also, Evelyn Whitlocks, who is the Digital Euro Project Leader, was asked on how we would use or how we would interact with, with the Digital Euro. And she said, and she answered that um, in your private bank, you will have like a parallel bank account just for central bank digital currencies. And with a max cap of around 3,000 euros. Obviously, these measures are not official, are just things that have been said um, by experts working on the project. But you have to keep in mind that many measures will be taken in place. And let's see if it will be really useful, this central bank digital currency or this digital euro. In terms of timeline, so when we could use digital euro or when could be implemented in our day-to-day -day lives, um, 
we are still far away, okay, but uh, just to, to, to let you know, in July 2021, uh, the Governing Council, they took the decision to launch the investigation phase, okay? This investigation phase uh, was mainly to understand um, how a digital euro should be structured which technologies and uh, how would be implemented within the uh, economy. You have to know that they have been considering many different technologies, but probably the, the one that they will end up using is DLT or distributed ledger technology, uh, which would be kind of a blockchain technology or uh, similar to it. Actually, a blockchain is uh, a digital ledger technology. Also, we can see that uh, from July 2021 to uh, autumn 2023, they will be in this investigation phase. And in autumn 2023, this investigation phase will end and uh, they, the European Central Bank will say, okay, uh, what are we doing now? Uh, should we go forward, move on with this initiative? What should be the next steps for the digital euro? So um, we will be looking for, we are looking forward for uh, autumn 2023 to know what or which is the decision uh, regarding the digital euro and probably we will already know which shape will it take. So in autumn 2023, we'll have more clarity on next steps for digital euro, but it's been said that uh, we cannot expect uh, digital euro to be implemented uh, before 2025. So we still have three, four years um, until digital euro can become a reality. My personal opinion on the digital euro is actually very positive. I think it would be super interesting and super positive for the European Union and the Eurozone countries to be able to use a CBDC. But obviously with everything comes with uh, some disadvantages or some weaknesses. And for me, one of the main ones would be uh, privacy. I think that the CBDCs can unlock uh, a lot of possibilities, can streamline transactions, can uh, make processes way more efficient between banks or between uh, companies, between uh, private entities, uh, between persons. Um, so I think overall um, they can have a very positive impact within the economy, but it will be very complex and very difficult for them to really understand which is the best way to implement it. So if you like this video and you found this topic interesting, leave a comment in the video and let me know what you think about CBDCs and Digital Euro. I'll be happy to read and to answer uh, any questions. Click the like button, subscribe for more videos like this and see you on the next video, all right? Ciao.